Welcome back, everyone. Well, you know, every time I come over here to the Strand, it's like a field of dreams. <laughs> you know that, right? Yes. <laughs> I've said this to you many times. I'm going to be serious today, though. Oh, we are? No, oh, no, okay. no. Okay, okay, no. good. And the reason I'm saying that, let me set the stage for you. Thank you. Is uh, you're talking about Hudson Falls, quiet town, upstate New York. Not a heck of a lot going on, Hudson Falls. And Jonathan and his friends decide, we're going to take this old theater and we're going to completely restore it. The community is going to get involved. Everybody's going to volunteer. And we're going to take it from some, let's just say, it was urban revitalization in the 60s or whatever that ruined the theater. It's so beautiful. And you had to yeah. bring the theater Functional. back. Functional. And let's just fast forward the likes of Tony Desaire, Martin Barr, Albert Lee, Jenny Lynn. Yes. Right? Yes. Babora, can't pronounce her last name. Kolarova. Kolarova. Uh, I've all played here, and it's nonstop. And most recently, of course, we were over here when Tony Desaire did the homecoming, right. which was the celebration of the grand opening right. of the theater. Right, the completion of phase one. So now, yeah. now you understand why it's Field of Dreams, right? It's still, and it's still, we're still asleep. No, we're still <laughs> yeah. dreaming. It's, uh, there's things that we're looking forward to. There's phase two, and there's all yeah. these great new acts coming that have never mm -hmm. been here before. Well, you know what? We're going to start. Let's talk about a couple of things that you're going to want to know about between now and the end of the year and, and just coming into the winter. Uh, we got to start with Tony Levin, okay? Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I think it was a Tony Desaire, right? And I grabbed the list of upcoming events. And I'm walking out, and I'm looking down the list, and I'm seeing Ernie LaRouche, who, of course, is a killer freaking drummer, and he's doing these great 80s heavy metal things. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And yeah. people like Mark Abadilli are reserving the front row. The whole row, Buying right? the front row for almost every show. I know. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Amazing. Let's yeah. do a, a shout out for Mark. Okay. Hello, Hi, Mark. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, I look on the list, and I'm thinking, you know, I remember when I saw Martin Barr's name on the list, I was like, this is not possible. Right. Then I saw Albert Lee's name on the list. That's not possible. Peter Asher, that's not possible. Yeah. And now it's Tony Levin. Yeah, I know. That's, that's one of those for me, too. It's like when you get the email, I'm like, the Tony Levin? Yeah, right. He's coming to Hudson Falls? That's so, right. If for me, anyway, and for musicians, he's, mm -hmm. he's the musician's musician. You know, he's one of those guys like Martin Barr or Albert yeah, Reed. Right. He's more in the behind the scenes, but you know that without that sound on the record, that's right. it wouldn't be the same record. Well, you know, if you want to know the likes of what we're talking about here, you've got the elite of the elite of British rock seek him out. And he was responsible for creating not only his own sound, which was insane, which you can hear on any Peter Gabriel thing you want to listen to, Gabriel, yeah. but uh, the stick is what I think about, right? He's yeah. just a consummate, creative bass player yeah. across all genres. John Lennon. Yes, right. Double that's fantasy. Right. So that's where that's right. I discovered Tony Levin is, and I'm listening to the song Watching the Wheels. Wheels, yes. Like, Where's that bass line coming yeah, from? I've never heard of anything like that before. That's so funny you mentioned that. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, John Lennon. That's right. So, so he's coming to Hudson Falls. It's December 8, uh, which has got to be a Sunday, right? <clears throat> Sunday afternoon at 3 yeah. p.m. in the winter. We, all our shows on Sundays are at 3 p.m. in the wintertime. We, we have a great winter. It's much better than the rest of the year for us. That's unreal. And we're going to show you they're constantly renovating the theater. And we're going to talk about phase two, okay? Great. Uh, but phase one was just absolutely phenomenal. We'll show you some. Uh, Andrew's going to shoot some stuff inside so you can see what they've done to the cove up on the ceiling with the chandelier and just all the cool stuff you've done. Yeah, you know? well, and that people have offered to do. People that have yes. come off the street and said, oh, I could do this for you, or mm -hmm. I could bring this in for you. And, and, and it, if it's a great fit, then we welcome it. We're well, you know, we were here for the rehearsal for Tony Desaire because we shot it. Um, and you're going to see it here at the Strand on the 29th of December, right. correct? Yeah. And we're also going to run it on all look uh, media platforms, uh, the film, and also the shorter version of a tracks thing that we're doing with his original music. But we, we were here in the afternoon before the performance, and the carpet wasn't laid down No, yet. that's right. We were still putting the place together. It's so typical of each project that we've done. It's like, eh, well, as long as the concert gets put on, mm -hmm. then whatever happens around it, leading up to it, it's, I don't It know. just gets done. It just gets done. You know what I mean? Somehow. Uh, let's talk about a couple of things coming up between now and uh, end of year that you, that you want to highlight. Uh, McCrell's classic Christmas uh, stuff, The right? Christmas show, yeah. yeah they right. sold out the egg a few years ago. So they've done, this is their third year doing their Christmas show here. Very popular. At least a few hundred tickets will be sold. And mm -hmm. it's already selling well. So that's a great show. Um, what about this ballet thing? 
Well, the ballet thing that just it just happened. That was a great project. That was uh, the New York Dance Project. Uh, it was a former Joffrey principal named Davis Robertson partnered with a, a local former Joffrey principal named Pamara Perry. Oh, sure. And local dance company Reality Dance. And they did this amazing presentation, a reading of The Night Before Christmas, and then it inserted with ballet excerpts from The Nutcracker and from some traditional carols. Really a great concept. And, wow. it's, and again, this space is that workout room for shows that are in development. It's a great space to try things out. Mm -hmm. Like Jethro, uh, Martin Barr's Jethro Tell coming to... Try right. out the show before taking it across the country. Things like that. Works you know, well. uh, you know, we mentioned uh, the the likes of these legends like Martin and Albert Lee and that stuff. They haven't been here once. They've been here twice. Yeah, they come back, and they're coming back next year. I know. That's so unbelievable. Talk about highlighting a, another Martin Bard, Jethro Tull. And experience. they use yeah. and they use the space, by the way, to rehearse that, that you're talking yeah. about. Well, you know, rolling into that, uh, we're moving into phase two. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, so. We started out more as. Well, the, the whole thing is for economic development, quality of life, education through the arts. Yeah. So we have 1,200 square feet of office space above our little coffee shop, mm -hmm. and we want to turn that back into our educational space. Mm -hmm. We just sold the Hudson River Music Hall. We'd had that for eight years, and that had become our community music school. That's right. So we want to bring that program over here to, to bring that energy into the space, too. Wow. And to bring students, kids, older adults who are just learning music for the first time let them learn about it and then come in and see a great show and experience it that way too. So that's part of the front part of the office. We have uh, above the old stage, we've built a, a green room and now a second floor that's going to be a dance studio and rehearsal space and recording space. It's an amazing space and you'll see that too. Mm -hmm. So that's part of phase two also. And we have two basements to develop for storage. So when does phase two kick in? Probably in the springtime. Oh, okay. We have a grant through uh, Kerry Werner's office. Right. And also a grant through National Grid. Tell me Kerry Warner hasn't been supportive. Great support. Unbelievable, yeah. right? Yeah, really great you know, support. Again, it's this field of dreams thing. Uh, you know, it's so much of it. Every time we joke about that, you know, but every time we actually spend an extra beat thinking about it, it has so much to do with you. It, uh, and when you talk about the school, you realize that if you can create education space here, yeah. that the whole reason the artists come is because it is a creative space. Yeah. And the younger you expose children to this creative curse that you and I have had our whole right. life, right. It, uh, the more it becomes a part of who they are. Right. And hence, Field of Dreams keep popping up. And it's such a necessary part of this, is a, this exist, existence. It, it really yeah. is that creative energy and, and that thing that creates a, a vibe and a buzz and a reason to come around, a reason to develop things and support each other. Mm -hmm. It comes from that creative spark. And, you know, I really go to The Strand. Is it strand, thestrand.org, right? Isn't that the strand, it is? uh, mystrandtheater.org. Yeah, I, I never so many right. strands. Yeah, I know. You know. Mystrandtheater.org. And uh, you'll really get an idea of the, of the schedule. And, you know, sprinkled in there, of course, is Across the Pond and the Led Zeppelin tribute that you always yeah, think a, to that's sneak still in there. Yeah, we have another Ballet Beatles show uh, this weekend, as a matter of fact. It's uh, December 7th. There's so many shows. I... There are so many shows. We uh -huh. have live music in the coffee shop every Monday night now. We have yeah. a sponsor called, uh, named Borlex Energy mm -hmm. Company, and they sponsor live music every Monday in the coffee shop. It's free. Uh, it's just it's remarkable what you've accomplished. So don't forget, we've got Tony Levin coming up on the 8th. This is one that we really need to support. When artists of that caliber make it a point to come here to yeah. play, yeah. which means that the word gets around amongst that crowd yes. that this is a space to come to rehearse, it's a space to come to have this intimate sort of relationship with an audience. That's something we need to support. So that's December 8, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday in the winter. Give me a break. That is and, so intense. And can I tell you about that show? Yeah. He's bringing a jazz quartet. So ah. his brother's the pianist who was a Juilliard grad. Right. And, and he's... Um, playing that material that he's recorded over the years, but as a jazz quartet. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to experience that. I just, I can't wait. Of course, you've got the McCrells, you've got this interesting ballet holiday thing that's coming up, but please go to mystrandtheater.org, you'll see the whole schedule, and be prepared to be knocked out by what's coming, and make, a, make it a point to pick out the things that you want to do to support this, this theater. Well, it's great to see you. Happy great holidays. You. You're going to get a little vacation time now? In about a month. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, two or three days. Great. All right, so you'll probably just lock yourself in a room and play the piano? Uh, yes. Yeah, right. Yes, I will. <laughs> or lock myself in here and play the piano. <laughs> Good Thanks. to see you, pal. Nice to see you. See this interview again. You can head to our website. Look, tvonline.com.